Hello there, welcome back to my workshop. Today we're looking at my latest Scratch Build 3D printer. And this is based on the Chiron. So we have a 410 by 430 size bed. It's a big old boy, and that's what I've called it, big boy. How imaginative. This was my Christmas project. I started it just before the Christmas break and wanted to do as much as I could between Christmas and New Year and a little bit afterwards. So we're starting off with the Anycubic Chiron, which I've had for quite a while. I've upgraded that, it had Clipper and her, her mirror, but it was still slow, even with input shaping. The noises that it would make when it was moving that big bed around, when you pushed it too hard, it just wasn't happy. So I had a project where I was printing a very big part. This is something that we'll see in a future video. And it was taking up pretty much all of the bed. And individual parts were taking 20 odd hours, and there were three big parts. So that was like three days of solid printing. After that I finished, I knew that I needed to convert or buy or make some kind of big format Core XY. So my first step was to dismantle the Chiron and use as many parts as we could. Here we see a time lapse of me taking it all apart. And by the end of it, we do have the bed and we have quite a lot of parts from the frame. Also, we found a really big chunky power supply. This bed is not mains, but they were using a MOSFET and they gave it a, a big 800 watt, 24 volt power supply, as well as a separate 24 volt power brick for controlling the board. I tried to heat this up without the MOSFET and it just pulled too much current. It's using a lot of power. So this bed is quite good and we've got some parts from the frame. So let's have a closer look at the parts that make up this printer. So this really is a big old boy. I can't even get it in frame on the camera. So like I said, we have the Chiron bed, which is 400 by 430. The frame is 2020 and 2040, and it's 600 wide. The reason that I limited it to 600 wide is so that it fits back into the enclosure where it came from. It's 590 tall and almost 700 deep. And it was mainly because of the size of the extrusions that I already had to save me cutting things down, but also so that we had plenty of room for the tool lead to move over the full length and actually go longer than the bed. If we look on the top, we do have the old Vcore Pro motion system from the rat rig with the EVA 3 tool head. But you'll notice that the linear rail is on the top rather than on the bottom where it normally is. This allows us to use the rods fitted in to the 2020 extrusions on the top and the bottom. So we've got lots of custom CNC milled parts and this part is actually from the Chiron. So I reused some of the parts that made up the old bed and cut them down. This is from the old Voron 1.8 and I just redesigned them to use 10 millimeter rods and bearings. Then we've got the lead screw as well. There are four of those so we can do quad gantry leveling. We have Clipper with the usual touch screen. Again, something that I had lying around. So let's quickly open up this panel and we can have a look at what's driving it. So if we look underneath, I did the same trick as on the Voron. So it's mounted on a DIN rail with everything facing up. The two power supplies are underneath there. And I just used some birch plywood that's laser safe so that I could cut something on the Hackspace laser. Yeah, I'd already spent far too much money. We have an LDO Leviathan, absolutely fantastic. This is the MOSFET that drives the board, borrowed the old fan, and we can see that the Raspberry Pi mounts onto the Leviathan. The Leviathan is connected to the tool head via CAN bus. That was a load of fun getting that set up, and it's working really well. You can't really see, but the A and B motors are two amp drivers that I brought from Ooze Nest when I ordered some more of the frame. The lower parts of the frame uh, came from the Chiron. So the, those parts and the side. These uprights actually came from the Tycoon Max from the Kaiwu. And then the top parts I had uh, cut from Ooze Nest. So that they, I knew that they were perfectly straight so everything will, will be nice and square. We've got linear rails that were brought from Amazon. So I brought three of those for the top. 
but we're using rods and uh, bearings for the Z. The tool lead is an EVA 3. We have a big tree micro probe. I would have liked to have gone tap on this again, but um, I don't think it's possible really. We've got an orbiter. The tool head is using a big tree can bus. Got a, a big old server fan on the back, a blowermatron. Heightened is a Rapido and we've got a 0.6 CHT nozzle in there. It's also a filament runout sensor and a lot of these parts I brought in the sales. Just like between Christmas and New Year there was loads of sales on. So I got loads of parts cheap for this. The Leviathan was possibly the most expensive thing that I brought being around about £100. Most expensive individual part but it's well worth it. I did buy two more Z lead screws and then the ones at the back came from the Chiron. So we have used a lot of parts from the Chiron on this printer. I've cobbled together a camera mount so that we get a decent view. So I will quickly put the panel back on and then we'll have a look at it printing and I'll show you some of the prints that I've done and how awesome this printer is. So I've homed the printer and the beds all the way up the top. So there is a few issues with this printer and it's like always when we've got these bars that go in the front it kind of gets in the way but I really needed to keep the strength of this as rigid as possible so um, yeah it's a little bit tricky it's actually easier to use the printer from the side but when it goes back in its enclosure it's going to be, that's going to be even more tricky if we just do a quick home home all we've got end stops on here we're not using sensorless, although the Leviathan can use sensorless. And now if we do the quad gantry, because we've got independent, four independent Zs lead screws, we can probe the corners and automatically adjust each individual lead screw so that the bed surface is flat. It's a noisy old bugger as well. So that is just finished. If we look on the screen, we have a 0.01 and the tolerance was 0.04, so it's done a really good job of leveling those four corners. We'll just home it again, and we are ready to print. So I have a macro that heats up the bed, heats up the nozzle, and does the home, and then levels the gantry. So it does that, and then I leave it for like at least five, 10 minutes, because I've noticed if you don't leave it, the bed expands quite a bit. It's not, a, like a, a normal big bed that you would find on a rat rig for like a six millimeter cast aluminium plate it does have thermal expansion but I, I just leave it to heat soak for a little bit so now let's get something set up to print and while that's printing I'll show you some of my examples okay we've heated the bed we've heated the nozzle it's done all the leveling and whatnot so let's get a print going I'm going to do um, a, a vase cylinder just to show off, just to do a quick print. We are limited by the flow of the filament, which is 20 cubic millimeters per second. We don't really want to be going crazy fast on these bigger printers, but we will, we will lose some quality. Makes lovely noises. You'll notice that I've got an LED in the front and that's one from Vector 3D it's one of Adam's products works really well I bought the Neo version so it's got RGB so that is 19 cubic millimeters per second 0.6 line width 0.2 layer height You can see the spool spinning. So print speed is really good, print quality is really good. So while that's going on, let's have a look at some of the prints that I've been doing. 
So this was the first big print that I did, which is this Spider-Man. This was printed with lightning infill in around about four hours. Looks fantastic. I printed this thing hand. Uh, this looks amazing. You can't really see it because the white throws everything off. But the level of detail on that is also fantastic. Another white print, so probably overexposed, but this is a T800. Again, looks fantastic. The one that I'm most proud of is this Daredevil mask from DO3D, printed in Everyone Sparkle Red, and that looks absolutely amazing. Had some little issues at the top, something got caught, and it actually snapped off the probe on the old printer. I originally printed the tool head with ESON ABS Plus and everything just broke. That's when I reprinted in the Bamboo ASA. But that looks absolutely fantastic. How good is that? So there we have my big boy printer. It's not a Voron, it's not a rat rig. It's a combination of many different types and technologies. Printing beautifully, more than double the speed of what the Chiron was doing, while actually printing with a much higher quality. I'm very, very pleased. I do have another big printer. I've got the Copy Master, but I really have spent all my money on this. So I doubt that I will be doing another printer project anytime soon. In fact, I'm kind of happy with the printers that I've got. They're all doing their function, they're all doing their job, and they're all working incredibly well. And I'm still super impressed with the P1P. Some projects that I've got coming up, you're gonna love what I've been doing with it. So thank you for taking a look at this, the big boy, the cheer on conversion, and we'll see you soon. Bye.